Welcome, everyone, to the New Voice Live, episode number 17. Um, we've got a lot of uh, great things in store for tonight, with a couple speakers, a full roster for table topics, so I'm excited. As I said earlier, this is really, um, we're into the swing of things, and hopefully, hopefully this will be um, part of an ongoing effort from here on out to help us all develop and get better at public speaking. Um, it certainly has been a journey for me. It has been a real transition from the live, in-person speaking to now speaking to this little pinhole in front of me. Um, I have to admit, I still struggle with it. It is not easy, but I do know that I'm getting better at it every week. Um, and as Kaylee said, as painful as it is to look at the recordings, I highly recommend it. Um, that's why ultimately we're all here, is to look in the camera and say, I like what I see. And that ain't easy at times. Um, and I can tell you from personal experience, it's not been easy uh, in, in a couple different ways, which I would like to explain further. And that's all going to happen as we go through the curriculum that we're building for you all. Right now, we've got speakers who are going through the Competent Communicator Manual, Rob and um, uh, we've got Rob tonight as well as... Colleen. And so they're going through their competent communicator manuals, um, but we're going to start to change things up here shortly. Um, we think that New Voice Live is a little different than speaking in front of the public, which means that I think we, our curriculum needs to change a little bit as well. So for those of you who are rushing off and doing your speeches, we're going to ask you to stop at the fourth speech at this point in time and then we're going to try to implement some new things that incorporate the new reality we live in. So that stuff's all coming in the future. We've got some really fun things in store and planned, uh, but for now I think what we're going to do is, uh, again, go through our Comp Communicator Manuals to speech number four and then change things up a bit. That's also a nice segue for me to let everyone know our first speaker tonight is Rob, who's giving his second speech tonight. And in the Competent Communicator Manual, speeches are given the time limit of five to seven minutes. We've condensed that here at New Voice Live, so all our speeches are three to four minutes. So those of you who are going through the curriculum, just keep that in mind from here on out. All speeches here are three to four minutes, despite what the Competent Communicator Manual says. Having said that, we didn't let Rob know sufficiently, and so he's prepared a speech which he's going to have to now try to condense down into three to four minutes that he thought originally was five to seven. So we have to give him um, some props for the last-minute change and standing up to that, but also some leeway because <laughs> he's having to, on the fly, change up his speech. So I just want to let everybody know that. And for future reference, three to four minutes on the speeches, table topics is one to two. Okay? With that said, let us get into this formal part and get – Rob on the screen. Uh, let me get Rob there. Bear with me. Sorry, y'all. Rob, you there? Let's get Rob. That's not Rob. Hold on. There we go. Rob. Hey there, Rob. Hey, Henry. I'm here. How are you? I'm doing well, Rob. So, yes, you are really a um, – we've always called you like our guinea pig. Uh, <laughs> you came in early. You didn't know what you were getting into. Yep. <laughs> and we basically said, well, we don't know what we're doing either, so um, we're going to use you as a guinea pig to help us figure out what works and doesn't work. So it's, cool. it's great for me to know that you're still here, that we haven't scared you off, um, but that I just want to also say that we really appreciate you being an early adopter and audience member with us. Um, it really means a lot, and it's also my way of saying I really look forward to hearing your speeches, and tonight's speech is Organize Your Speech, speech number two, and we've got the title Music Masters, which I'm very intrigued about as well. So, as I said, I know you thought five to seven. We've got you down to three to four. So yeah. that, that I'll try to give you as much time as possible. Um, so with that said, I'll let you take we'll it away. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Take it away. <laughs> okay. As Henry said, I'm Rob Price, and I love music. 
I'm sure most of you do as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transport all of you with me and we're going to go, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. we're going to go to, and just hang in there. We're going to go to your favorite concert. And just imagine you being there, the sweat dripping down your face from like dancing for hours and your voice just really uh, scratchy and rough from singing your heart out to every single song and just being in a community of inspiring people that connect and you're waiting for the encore of your favorite band to come on stage and unfortunately we can't be at a concert right now because of covid However, as I wrote in the New York Times yesterday, you can catch up and get your music fix with a lot of music documentaries, or as I call them, rockumentaries. And I love them. They're not the same as live music, but you know, we all know what they have, right? They have like, they start off with a tough situation and then there's the band or the artist trying to find their voice. And then there's the trials and tribulations of them working hard to become the band that we know and love today. And I, I recently learned about this group that started, that started during uh, COVID actually. And they you know, are doing stuff that's really challenging and, and doing some really new and revolutionary things but they're small and, and, and they're growing and, and, but they're going to be huge someday, I guarantee. And I can't wait to share with you them. And, and they're called NVL. And, and some of you may know them. Um, you know, New Voice Live is another name that they go by and, and you're all part of it. And it's you, it's, it's all of you are, are New Voice Live, that group. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the rockumentaries and documentaries and, and the themes within them. Um, and just think about how they, they kind of connect and relate back to some of the things and themes that we're doing in here. And, and I'm not talking about the sex and the drugs and the rock and roll part. I'm just talking about the, you know, the environment that, that these musicians are in, the finding a voice and the practice and the community and the fan base around them. And it's, the parallels are uncanny. It's, you know, facing their fears like we are now that environment of, of facing those challenging things and, and, and finding you the music within you and going, going on. Um, the second is really discovering that voice, that aha moment in those movies where you're like, oh gosh, yes, that's, what, that's their signature. Um, there's this great John Coltrane quote that you can play a shoestring if you're sincere. And, and I think that's what we're all searching for here is that sincerity, that unique voice that's um, special to us. And then the third is really that my favorite part of these movies is, is the practice and the process, that montage scene where the band's like working up to that like epic concert, like the Queen movie and the community that supports them. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't happen in a snap like it does, like you want it to in real life. It, you have to really work for it. So, um, so when they watch the NVL rockumentary years later, they're gonna say, gosh, it was such a crazy time what they were doing. And they were doing groundbreaking, incredible work in public speaking digitally and the creative community that was amplified by the audience. Um, and that's you. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you quickly back to the, the concert, the encore. Do -do -do, do -do -do. And and you're waiting and your band finally comes on stage and you're cheering for them. Ah, yeah, it's them. And it's you, it's all of you. You are all the rock stars. Thank you, New Voice Live, mic drop. Wow, that was incredible. That was so good, um, and I I love the switch of the scenery in the midst of it. That was it, it was fantastic. It was so good. Um, but no, look, I'm not you. your formal evaluator. I, I'm going to let somebody else give you your evaluation. But I thought it was fantastic. Um, loved it. And so 
now is our time for us to take advantage of technology some more, and this is where you all get to give your feedback. So let's give Rob your feedback. I'm going to have to take off my uh, Ramones leather jacket. It's a little too hot <laughs> for July. Relax. Yeah, sit back in the green room while all the rest of us will do your evaluation. So, Sean, would you mind putting a link in the chat? And for you guests out there, if you click that link, that'll take you to an evaluation form for Rob. And Rob, we have your self-evaluation form as well. So Sean has done that chat for you as well. Let's get Rob back on the screen here. Well, let me, actually, we want Peter on the screen. Peter, are you there by chance? I'm here. Can here you guys go. hear me? Welcome, Peter. You are doing you. the formal evaluation for Rob. Um, you've already gotten my feedback. I thought it was fantastic, but of course, you're the formal evaluator. So we'll get Rob on the screen here. And um, I did. Oh, I did want to say one other thing too before I let you go, Peter. For members. Um, we are uh, the formal evaluations that you all fill out the surveys we give those all back to you all via email so if you don't ha if you haven't been getting your feedback that's going to be going to your um, emails and check your spam boxes so that's the one thing we've been having struggles with is as we've been sending out emails a lot of it goes into spam boxes so check those spam boxes for our interaction with you all um, for surveys for roles, for sign-ups, and all those things, okay? So with that being said, Peter, why don't you – let me get Rob back up on the screen. I'll find Rob real quickly. Rob, you're there, right? There we go. Yeah, I'm here. And, Peter, you have three minutes for our evaluation, so take it away. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Rob, I can't remember – if you join Toastmasters to improve your public speaking or just to show it off, because that was very, very <laughs> impressive. As Henry said, I think a couple of things that set out to me, uh, general rule, first of all, I'm always thinking of ideas for speeches. What a great idea for a speech. Uh, you taking what you're passionate about music and, and design and sort of the creative, creative aspect uh, to your life and creating such a great story uh, around how that uh, is a good metaphor analogy for, for Toastmasters. I, I was very, very engaged. And yes, we all do like the rockumentaries. I've been guilty of watching them uh, in my time as well. I'm sure many of us have. And I just love the way you weave that entire theme throughout your, your, your speech. I thought your facial expressions were very good. Uh, you had, uh, it was very obvious, uh, you know, you had gestures in your, in your, in your face that uh, correlated to the thing you were saying at the time. I thought you did uh, a great job, uh, again, engaging introduction. Um, you took us there using 
great word choice to our last concert that we went to. And I know that's something that is not uh, maybe that hard to do because everyone's visualizing what that's going to be like when COVID is over. But nevertheless, you did a really, really good job of it. Uh, I yeah. like your use of uh, threes. It seems like you used it uh, at least two times in your speech to try to uh, convey your message. And that was that was really good, right? Everybody knows that's a good uh, rule of thumb to stick to. Uh, the reasons why we like rockumentaries, reasons why you know NVL is like that. Very, very good use of that. I thought your crowd noise uh, generation was great. Your <laughs> all of that really um, uh, kept it interesting and engaging. You didn't just sort of drone on about something. You really, uh, you really, you, you really sort of uh, were very um, wide in your range. Uh, if there's one area that maybe I would improve, uh, there was a moment it seemed like where you sort of lost your train of thought, thought a little bit. You had uh, looked off to the right. Uh, it was just a brief, brief moment. Uh, but that sort of broke that engagement that you had with us and with, with uh, I believe, the audience. I mean, as Henry said, you had just a few minutes to truncate your speech. So that could have been a, a function of that. But very minor, great speech, great background. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Peter. Yeah, so great job. Um, I really appreciate all the, the, the commentary um, from the audience, right? Th this is what we're trying to accomplish, is to have everybody be able to give their own perspective. And Peter, you know, for somebody like you, you said to Rob, to you, whether you join Toastmasters just to show off, you're in the same boat, right? You've got a very good um, way about you in terms of presentation. And we're all trying to learn from each other. That's really the whole exercise around this is the ability to learn from each other. And most importantly, in front of the mirror, right? That's that ability to look yourself in the mirror and go, I like what I see. It's the most difficult audience member of all, which is ourselves. So Peter, great job on the uh, evaluation. Rob, great job on the speech. If you had asked me what I was hoping for for New Voice Live, this is it, right? This is exactly what I'm hoping for. Some, Really good speeches and some really good evaluations. So thanks for that, Peter. Appreciate it. Okay, so let's get back to our next speaker, which is going to be Colleen. Let me get Colleen on the screen. Colleen, are you there? I'm here. Okay, let's get her on the screen. Colleen, there you go. So, Colleen, we have you giving your icebreaker. I think we might have lost the camera there. Bear with me. There we go. Maybe not. Um, Colleen, I'm going to try to see if we can get you on the screen here with your speech start. But for those of you in the audience, her speech is an icebreaker. And the title is My Perfect New York Sunday. So let's get you on the screen and start it. All right. So like Henry said, my name's Colleen Monkern, and I'm going to describe for you guys my perfect New York City Saturday. Um, and for the record, this is a pre-COVID Saturday. So I'm going to take you guys on that journey. So my perfect New York Saturday starts off where I'm naturally waking up um, not to the sound of my cell phone alarm. Um, I'm fresh as a daisy, already thinking about how this is going to be the most perfect day. Um, mo I, I'm a management consultant, so I travel Monday through Thursday. Um, so most likely I've been burning it on both ends. Um, but on this perfect Saturday, I've woken up just in time uh, for 1030 hot yoga. As I walk over to the hot yoga studio, um, I am taking in all of the interesting people as I stroll through Madison Square Park. I'm admiring the beautiful um, ironwork on the New York Life Building. I'm admiring the iconic um, Flatiron Building. And as I get to hot yoga, I'm reminded of growing up in Houston where my parents were avid hot yoga goers. Um, and we would traditionally go as a family. My parents would hold hands during Savasana and the yoga teacher would always joke to them about how a family that yoga 
together stays together in a uh, very cliche way or a cheesy cliche way. Um, after I've quite literally sweat out all of my stress from the week, I head on home, I make myself the most perfect pot, a cup of coffee and I pry my husband out of bed. Uh, it's Saturday um, and it's football season. So we go to our favorite place where we can eat queso and watch football, which is this little hole in the wall called Javelina um, down by Gramercy Square Park. So as we walk through or as we walk over to the restaurant, that's, that's, the, that's most of the fun, right? So you walk through, uh, walk along the park, you I'm taking in all of the beautiful flowers, the trees, the beautiful ivy growing up, growing up on the buildings, um, critiquing the different brownstones as I walk. And if we're lucky, we've, we've passed a couple of disheveled looking girls or guys and laughing to ourselves about how it looks like they had a, a little bit or how they had a good night the night before, right? Uh, so as we get to the restaurant, we stuff our face with queso. Uh, delicious fajitas, extra jalapenos, and wash it all down with uh, my favorite spicy margaritas. And by that time, we're finally ready to officially start our day. Uh, we stroll through the streets of New York, um, rolling through different art galleries, boutiques, clothing stores um, that might as well be art galleries in their own right. Uh, walking through walking through the Lower East Side into Nolita. Um, and yep, and then by that time, um, as it gets as it gets later, um, and we've, we've walked through all the different boroughs that we went to, uh, we head on over, hop in the subway and head to head to Brooklyn uh, to meet up with some friends for for dinner. Uh, if we're lucky, we found um, a lovely patio where we can laugh and catch up on the week and talk about all of our funny stories from the week. After that, um, after that, later in the night, um, this is my perfect Saturday. So we are going to find a live music, luckily enough, or we're, we are going to find live music. So luckily enough for me, uh, there's a live band playing a 70s, 70s music just on the street. It's a live 70s cover band. We, uh, we pack into a basement where there's way too many people. We're all screaming, singing along to Jerry Rafferty, Steve Miller, Janis Joplin, I could go on um, until all hours of the night, dancing all night, singing at the top of our lungs. Uh, the next morning I wake up, I have no voice. My body is completely sore from walking around all day long. I hope I still have my cell phone. I hope I still have my jacket. Um, I'm relieved that I have a whole nother day until I have to go back to work. And I think to myself, what a great Saturday it was. Colleen, great job. That sounds like a pretty good Saturday. Um, I, and you know what? Being in coronavirus makes it even more difficult to hear. I could, I'm desperate for that time of Saturday to get out of my apartment. Great job on the speech. We have your formal evaluation coming up next. So while we uh, do that and wait for that, let's get the chat link in the um, chat, Sean, and get your evaluation going for folks.
us get into our formal evaluation for the evening for Colleen. Emily is evaluating her icebreaker. Emily, are you there? I am here. All right, Emily, I will let you take it away. You've got three, uh, three minutes on the clock. Hi, Colleen. <laughs> Hi, congratulations on your first speech, um, the icebreaker. I really loved it. Uh, since the, the beginning, the, the title, My Perfect New York Saturday, I was like intrigued what she's going to say. I want to know. I love New York. Is it going to be a pre right now? Um, but also I was thinking, how am I going to, what is she going to tell her about, about her life? Because normally when you, you listen to Icebreaker, it's more like a, a story of the life. But what I loved here is that I learned a lot of things about you. And I, I learned that you love yoga and that your whole family loves yoga and that you used to do that together, that you just take one cup of coffee per day, and that you love nature, you love Manhattan, and you love to walk the, uh, on the streets. I also learned that you work a lot and you are traveling all the time, so you really want to enjoy your Saturday 100 or even 200%. So I really loved it. I loved how it was structured. I was imagining you walking and doing all your activities, which was great. Um, I would love to hear more like, like you did with the yoga and you connected with your family, if other, other activities, why you like to go to the park and see the flowers, um, why you want to go to galleries, art, why... Why Brooklyn? I know you have some friends there, but perhaps more anecdote about there. What kind of, of um, music and dancing and, and everything. But besides that, I really enjoy it and it was great. Great job on that, Emily. I agree with you 100%. And uh, on behalf of the club as well, I would want to say welcome to the club, Colleen. Icebreakers are always my favorite speech because I get to say after that, we're now friends. We're no longer strangers. So welcome aboard. Glad to have you. So let us get on to the next portion of our show. This is going to be our table topics. And it's my honor to introduce Jorge to the stage. Let me find Jorge on the screen real quick. And Jorge is there. Here. Welcome, Jorge. And the question for the evening for you is, where do you get the most inspiration from? You're a very inspiring person. I know you from our in-person meeting, so you've, um, you've inspi inspired us before. I look forward to hearing your inspiration as the table topic master. So let me let you take it away as our table topic master for the evening. Great. Thank you very much, Henry. And, and hello, everybody, club members, guests, welcome. And to tonight or this evening, I have the opportunity to serve you as the Toastmaster, which simply means I will be facilitating each participant of the Toastmaster session to answer the question that we have tonight. Just to remind you that you have two, two minutes to share with us whatever you desire. You don't necessarily need to answer the question. It's just a suggestion. And just to remind you that talking or once you get talking, it can get addictive. So at after two minutes and 30 seconds, we're gonna start playing some music on the background to remind you that your time is up. So just, um, you know, try to use the two minutes. Don't leave it at 15 seconds or 30 seconds at the beginning, you know, just like I did when I first started. Use, use the time fully. And to start, I'm gonna, Oh, one more thing. Even though you may think, oh, the question, you know, seems easy. I know what, 
what I'm going to answer or what my answer is, I'm also going to add like one little hint, one little suggestion that may trigger for you to change your answer right on the spot. I know that sounds a little bit um, scary, but uh, it, it's easy. Don't worry about it. So to get started, we have Abubakar as the first uh, participant for the for this session. Good evening. Um, okay, that's your name. Yes. Okay. All right, Abubakar. So the the question is, where do you get the most inspiration from? So my hint would be, is is there a movie or movies that inspire you? Is there some quote or a quote that inspire you? What is it? Can you share with us? I have to say a quote uh, by um, Michael Jordan. Um, to sum it up, Michael Jordan mentioned that he takes over 8,000 shots in his career something like that and he missed a lot and that makes him a winner i believe that it makes him a winner is because he takes the risk even though the you know if he were to miss that it will, or, or, it will like the blame will fall on him that quote really inspires me because sometimes in life with when it comes to taking risk uh we side away from challenges it's just like with Toastmaster and doing table topics, you know, part of me just don't want to do table topic, but at the same time, if I really want to succeed in life, I have to take risk. Um, yeah, so that is my um, table topic for today. Thank you, Abubakar, for participating and definitely being brave, not, not being afraid to take some risks. It's definitely very important to get you far ahead in, in life. Thank you. Okay, we are going to move on to the next um, participant for the evening, and that is Rajiv. Yeah, hi, I'm here. Where do you get the most inspiration from? Yeah, I get the most inspiration from nature. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I'll see, I'll be walking down the street, I'll be walking in the park, and I'll notice a flower, how it's swaying in the breeze. I'll notice how it's, it's unique. Sometimes it's unique even if there's a cluster of flowers but still each flower is very unique in that cluster despite being the same color. Maybe they're angled a certain way. Maybe there's something unique about them. Maybe one of their petals is tilted in some direction. Maybe the center of the flower has more pollen inside and that'll inspire me to come up with one of my motivational posts on Instagram where I'll say that despite everyone being the same since we're humans and more or less look the same. Uh, there, we are quite distinct from one another if we choose to see ourselves as distinct and special and unique and accepting our differences as uniqueness. And it's all about positioning. It's all about thinking about how what might be perceived as a weakness is in fact a strength. If you allow yourself permission to see it as such because there's something about you that makes you unique and different and the world needs to know it and it's things like that that i get the most in inspiration from and most of my quotes or posts are all about motivation and helping people manifest success so that they live their best life ever every single day sharing with us and definitely I agree with everything you said it's really really important to share your, your potential like the word the word of the day is potential so you have potential I think your responsibility 
share, share it with uh, everyone else, the humanity, if you will. Thank you again. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I hope everyone has a magnificent weekend ahead. Awesome. Thank you. So moving on, we have Peter, our next participant in this session. Hello, and Peter. The question, hi. The question is, where do you get the most inspiration from? So do you think love can inspire someone? Do you think serving others can inspire someone? Go ahead. Thanks, Jorge. Those are, those are great prompts. And uh, I absolutely agree that both love and serving others are great motivators of inspiration. They it could be two ways to do it. I, I think you can take those avenues and look at people who do things that scare you and succeed and maybe sometimes don't succeed, whether they do it out of love or they do it out of a desire to serve others. We all know that people that choose a path of service do not always get rewarded. Perfect example right now, COVID-19, healthcare workers, teachers, uh, these are all people that serve our communities. And this crisis has just shown us that their work is completely undervalued, absolutely undervalued. And they are an absolute necessity to building a strong and resilient and loving society. So I would say that personally, my inspiration comes from those people, because when I think about whether I could do such a thing, I waver, but continue to find strength in the things that scare me by looking at their example and the example that they're setting, putting their lives on the line in service of others, giving their hours and, and days to teach the next generation of young children who will be carrying the mantle of our society into future generations. It's very, very inspirational. And that keeps me going. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Definitely, again, you said something very important. Those who are in the front lines, as they say, those nurses, um, police officers, uh, firefighters definitely are putting their, their lives on the line for us, uh, especially during these times. And definitely, I think they are very inspiring. Thank you again. Okay, our next participant. Yula. Hi, Yula. How are you? Hi, hi. Thank you. I'm well. All I right. think this is a great question that we have today. Where do I get my great inspiration from? I have four major. My background is one of the pink sand beaches in my country, the Bahamas. I can walk on the beach, relax, deep breathe, and I can get inspiration from relaxing on the beach. The most powerful inspiration points for me is life experiences, which encompasses other people's failure, as well as my failure. It gave me the potential to not go and do the things that will fail rather than trying to succeed. Children, I love watching children. They're so happy, they're so carefree. They worry about nothing. They have a, a life that whatever happens now, it happens now. Forget about it, we'll move on and have a better experience tomorrow. And I think if we implement that sort of thinking in our lives, to just let the past be the past, learn from the past, but hope for the future, that it would be a great life for us. But my number one inspiration is the potential to learn from great 
great speakers, great men, great quotes. My favorite quote is by Nelson Rockefeller. His quote says, you can never leave footprints in the sands of life by sitting. For me, if I'm sitting and not doing anything, if I don't have a potential to try and do anything, how would I ever succeed? What example would I leave for somebody else who may be using me as an example? I believe in these quotes. I love the quotes and they definitely inspire me to do my best. Thank you for the opportunity to answer this question and everybody have a fantastic weekend. Thank you, Yula. That was really great what uh, you just said. And thank you for sharing that quote from Nelson Mandela. I, I, I haven't heard it, but it definitely resonates with me. Thank you again. OK. Our next uh, participant, Annie. Hi, Jorge. How are you, Annie? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Great, thank you. So the question is, I know what the question is, but I'm just gonna say one more time. Where do you get the most inspiration from? And I'm gonna throw two curveballs at you, if you will. Is it a book? Is it images that you look at and inspire you or books that you read? You wanna share with us? Sure. Thank you for that great question and for the curveballs because they've uh, given me a great lead in to my answer. My passion in life is art and I'm a painter in my private and public life. And so what inspires me is color and value, light and there are many artists that I look at who inspire me to keep pursuing my own work. One of the greats, and this is not going to be a surprise to anybody, I think is John Singer Sargent. He was a master of form and composition and the use of color and value to create just such realistic and relatable portrait of of the people in his life. And when I look at his work, I immediately, when I'm in a museum and I'm standing looking at his work, I think I've got to go home right now and and try to imitate this and try to, to replicate this. And even though I never can, and I know that it continues to drive me every time I see his work. So I would say that's probably one of the biggest inspirations to me. Thank you for sharing about your passion for, for art with us. That uh, is one more thing that we learn about you today. At least I did. Thank you again. Thank you, Jorge. Our next uh, Me. How are you? Good Hi. for you. <laughs> Okay, so you know the question, where do you get the most inspiration from? And my two curveballs are, can you get inspiration from the inside, like not from outside? And also, can it, can it be inspiration to be able to inspire your family maybe? Can you share with us? Definitely. from different sources and you, you had asked if, uh, if you can get inspiration from the inside. Definitely, when you quiet your mind, uh, you, you connect with your inner being, you know, with your, 
which are inner being, which are self. In my case, I do through meditation. I definitely feel uh, inspiration, um, especially if I'm if I'm true connected to my inner being. I definitely feel inspired. Uh, different days, uh, at different in different ways, but you can get inspired from your inner being for sure. Um, quotes also, no, uh, one of the one of the one of the, the very inspirational quotes that I um, that I, I read is from Martin Luther King that uh, darkness cannot like remove darkness on, only light can uh, making it short I, I didn't have a lot of time to prepare so I was invited last minute but you guys know the quote so I find that an incredible quote because um, it just proves to us that that positive attitude and positive mind and positive energy that's the only thing is like only love can know can remove uh, hatred. Hatred cannot be removed with ha hatred, something like that. So quotes inspire me a lot. Um, artists inspire me. Music inspire me. My, me connecting with my inner being definitely inspires me because all of us, we are God, we are good. And when we connect with our true selves in our inner being, we can definitely inspire us and inspire the ones around us. Awesome, Rami. Thank you very much for sharing with us. And thank you for mentioning about, you know, like you do or you have the, the, um, the potential to inspire yourself from the inside out. And that's uh, really, really great. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. We have... Thank you. So we have Sean, the next participant. And Sean is one of the organizers. He's been with the, with the club, I don't know for how long, uh, it may be forever. And he is a pro at this. So Sean, you know the question, where do you get the, the, the most inspiration from? When I'm gonna throw the, uh, you know, the curveballs, you know me, I think, uh, by now. So, can you inspire to uplift yourself or someone? And can you inspire change anywhere, like in society, in, in, in at work? Can you speak a little bit of, about that? Yeah. Like, um... Yeah. Can you know, I like, um, Sean Tripal soon speaking? You know, like, um, I would be happy to answer all of your good questions. Um, uh, 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 Jorge, you know, like, um, I think I'm gonna throw a curveball back to you, and I'm gonna answer one of the questions that was proposed earlier in the in the uh, session and the thing that i would like to speak about is is when people speak about their obstacles fears challenges things you know, like things along those lines i know that you know like uh, those things can be very personal and they could be hard to share with other you know, you know, hard to share with like other people, but like, you know, like as we've seen in this club, all of our members here are extremely good at doing that sort of thing. And by like, you know, all of us doing that here, we're able to take our internal insecurities that we all have, put them into a physical form. And by doing that, it makes it a lot more relatable to everybody else on the call because it isn't just a part of you per se, it's a part of everybody else because since it's in a physical form, it can be heard, it can be seen by everybody else in the audience. And I think, uh, you know, I think you know, like a um, big reason why our platform has been successful so far is because when you do show that 
courage. And when you are in a vulnerable place, that those are the crossroads of innovation and change. And I think a big reason we are able to create a platform like this is because people are able to take off their armor uh, per se and talk about some of the hard subjects and you know, and you're like, uh, that's what m m makes you know, like N V L a like you know a like a uh, great place to be. Thank you. Awesome, Sean. I didn't expect anything less from you, and you've alluded to something really, really important, which is being. Um, being able to talk about your weaknesses, maybe in a way. And Rami said something also that I think is related and it's being comfortable with being uncomfort uncomfortable. So that's, a, that's one of the reasons that I like this session, the table topic session, because you get to be on the spot and then think, think quick, you know, on your feet and answer the, the best you can. So again, thank you, Sean. And I think we have our next participant, Rob, and might be our last, I don't know, but we'll, we'll, um, we'll see. Rob, are you there? Okay, I see you. So Rob, you know the question. Uh, and, yeah, I do. And I'm, and I'm also, you know that I have something special on the side. So can you share with us, you know, someone that inspires you or something that ins inspires you as well, if you want to share with us about any of that? Thank you. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's such a great question, uh, Jorge, and inspiration. And, and I talked a little bit about it earlier in terms of, of music. Um, and to me, the inspiration is the start of potential. And you get inspired, a spark happens, and then the outcome or the action is, is a creative process. So to me, there's, there's something so important in that. And to Rami's point earlier, um, a lot of times to get inspired, you have to get in spirit and uh, into a spiritual state and I've used meditation in the past for that uh, or traveling where you're in a, a place of, of peace where you could actually have a inspiration right now in COVID it's such a challenging time and, and I've been struggling with ways to get inspired recently started doing a person is She has the book, The Artist Way, and I started rereading that and going through some of the practices in there to find inspiration. I think I'm having some technical difficulties, but that's how I find inspiration. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, that's deep. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. And I heard from the organizers that Rob is our last um, speaker for today. And I want to thank you everyone who participated. I I kind of want to apologize for the for the for the question and the follow-up questions. I think that made might have made someone feel uncomfortable but again I like to be comfortable in um, in uncomfortable situations so hopefully I could I'm trying to share that with you as well again thank you my time is up and I'm gonna give it back to Henry I think thank you again yes Jorge thank you for that great job on that and um, you've been table topic masters a few times before and we all know that you come up with some curveballs which we like and so don't apologize for it. 
this is kind of where we're at, Jorge, is we've, like I said, run a full show. This is the second week now we've run a full show. And from here on out, what this really means is we're trying to personalize the show, which for all of us means that the show's us. So everyone that comes on gets a chance to put their own little personal spin on it. So I love the fact that you are uh, coming up with different uh, alternative questions. That's the stuff I think that keeps it fresh and lively and interesting. So anybody that takes on future roles, take a cue from Jorge. We have the main question, but if you want to change it around and personalize it, feel free. That's what makes the show different and fun every week. So with that said, Jorge, I appreciate it. Um, we're also adding, in addition to our speaker evaluation, an evaluation for our table topics master as well. So, Sean, do you want to put that link back up in the chat? And we'll give everyone a couple minutes to give Jorge some feedback as his uh, table topic master role. So, Sean, why don't you put that link in the chat? And we'll, again, put a couple minutes on the clock and let people give him his feedback. Oh, the other thing, too. Um, Another link that Sean's going to put in is your vote for favorite table topic. And if you win the best table topic in a runner-up, you get highlighted in Kaylee's gift-tastic emails every week. It's an honor that we're all striving for. So take a, make your vote for your favorite table topics as well and give Jorge your feedback. So two links in the chat for you guys. Hey, yeah, tell me what's up. Hello? Can you yeah. hear me? So we have our grammarian for the evening, Annie, uh, who's done our grammarian report. So Annie, you want to give us our report for the evening? Yes, thank you, Henry. Um, overall, it was a great performance by everybody tonight. Rob, you had four uhs or ums, three you knows, and one like in your, in your speech number two. Peter, you had a perfect score. Colleen, you had five or more uhs or ums and one so. Abu Bakr, you had a perfect score. Rajiv, you had one um and you got the word of the day. Peter, for your table topic, you got another perfect score. Emily, you had just one um. I was trying to count myself. I don't know if that's accurate, but I think I had two ums. Rami, five ums. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Sean, uh, ju just one um, three no's, and one like. And Rob, three ums in your table topic. Great job, Annie. And I'm not sure if we have a timer for the evening. Um, we do, it's me. 
Oh, it's Kaylee. Okay, so let me get Kaylee on the screen here. Let me find you. Hi. Kaylee, go yeah. ahead and take it away. I was happy to do the timer roll. Thanks again to Jorge for being the table topic master. It's it's a tough job and you did it great. I love your curve curveballs and you know we're here to stretch ourselves. So I appreciate that you had us stretch ourselves a little bit. And I thought all the table topics were really great. But let me get on to the timers report. So for Rob, your speech was at 4.30, which is a little over, but I know we were remiss in not giving you the accurate time frame. So you did a great job in, in limiting yourself a little bit there. Thank you. Evaluation for Peter, who gave Rob's evaluation, you were at 2.05. Colleen, your icebreaker was also a little over at 4.40, but again, we're just happy to have you and welcome to the club. Emily, your evaluation was at 2.35. Moving on to table topics, Abubakar, you were at a minute. Rajiv, a minute 50. Peter, two minutes and 20 seconds. Eula, you were at 2.30. Annie was at 2.10. Rami, who, hello. It's great to have you as our guest. Thank you. You were at 2.05. Bingo! Sean, you were at 2.30. And Rob, you're at 1.45. So again, thanks for everyone for speaking. Thank you, Kaylee, for that. And with that, we're at the close of our show, episode number 17 in the books. And um, as I said, this is um, we're now in it. We are now rolling full time. We're trying to make this as smooth as possible. It still has some glitches and some kinks here, which I'm going to continue to work on. But the content for me is perfect. Um, we're getting better and uh, more compelling speakers, and now that we're into the evaluations, I think there's some really good feedback that's happening as well. Um, I want to thank you all for coming. Uh, the last plea that I have for you all is now that you are here and regular participants in this full time, what we really are trying to do for all of us is to create an audience, to build the audience. So invite friends, invite folks that you think might be interested in this, and our product is now online, literally. We are on YouTube, so go check out the live stream. It looks much better in high def, 1080p. We're streaming here in 720, so the quality is not as good. So if you really want to see how good you look on camera, go to our live stream on YouTube. The link's in the channel. And Kaylee also sends it out to everybody every week. And also... One more reminder, check your spam boxes. For those of you who spoke, we're going to get your feedback forms to you via email. If you don't see it, check your spam boxes. Um, and with that said, anybody that's here as a guest, welcome. Please stick around. We'd love to talk to you after hours and give you any information about our club that uh, you may have. And, Kaylee, do we miss anybody? always want to try to introduce everybody that comes in at least to say hello. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to say hi to Rami because we didn't get to officially meet her at the beginning, but she jumped right in there for table topics. <laughs> hi, hi, Rami. Hi, how are you? I'm well. It's wonderful to meet you. Could you tell us where you're from and how you heard about our club to be here tonight? Pleasure is mine, actually. Um, I'm Brazilian. I was born in Brazil. Uh, I actually used to live in New York. I've been in South Florida I live in New York for four years and I've been in South Florida for 22. Um, I'm friends with uh, Rajiv. He's a friend of mine. He's the one who referred me, who invited me. I'm also friends with uh, David Rush. Uh, love David. And I all I seen the Toastmaster in Facebook through, um, I forgot her name now, is friends with David, uh, Lily, Lily. Oh, Lily, yes. Lily yes. is a longtime friend she of our got, club, yeah. Just got certified. She got a certification from the Toastmaster. She was super excited, so she posted in Facebook. She's in my Facebook, so I got to see that also. But uh, who first mentioned to me was actually David Rush. And then Rajiv, who is my friend, uh, through David, invited me so thank okay. you the pleasure is mine it makes me feel like we're very popular that you heard about us from three different people so i like that a lot <laughs> and 
<laughs> That's great. Well, you're very welcome. It's great to have you. Are you part of a Toastmasters club there in Florida or elsewhere? No, this is my very first time attending. I, I haven't even uh, read much uh, about. I knew that David and Lily, Lily through Facebook, David, because David and I had a lot of conversation. We one time cut off a flight together. And so we had about three hours conversation. He, I believe he mentioned something. And even after that, uh, Rajiv now is the one who, who invited me. But I, I first heard from David. And Rajiv and uh, Lily are friends with David. So. Oh, that's and wonderful. I, yeah, me. Rajiv is a big recruiter for us. So we appreciate that. Yeah, that makes me feel like we are, as Jorge just said in the chat, we are trending. NVL is trending if we're getting folks from Facebook and from multiple sources. So thanks for being with us, Rami. And we'd love to talk to you more if you'd like to stay after for after hours. We can answer any questions you might have or just tell you more about our club. Sure, pleasure is mine. Thank you. Can I have just two things to say? Is that Dulce? Yes. Yeah, do you, how's it going? <laughs> the first one is, that the Brazilian accent is my most favorite accent in English in the whole world. I just love it. But you know what, Rumi? It sounds as if you're losing it. <laughs> you must have a good penchant for languages, eh? That's the first thing. The okay. second thing is last week, I remember Henry said that I would learn to keep track of the as and ums and whatever online. Uh, I want you to know that that is not an issue for me at all. I mean, I've been doing stuff like that all my life, almost, because I used to work for IBM, I think I told you. Here's mm -hmm. the deal. I have found that we don't focus on one thing enough. Everybody is always multitasking all the time. I was around when we introduced the idea of multitasking. And before multitasking, we called it multiplexing because it was multiplexing through parts of the computer. The bottom line is everybody's always multitasking now. Nobody ever stops and does one thing. And Deepak Chopra, in one of his 21 day meditation challenges, pointed out that we better learn to do that. We should learn to do it again. Just one thing. Yeah, try that's a great see. lesson. Yes, try it and see how hard it is. It's no longer easy to do that. And as a result, by the way, the studies show we almost we have <laughs> we have the concentration of an ant or a fly or something now. Our concentration <laughs> level has gone down so badly. So try it one day, even though you might want to focus on many things, try focusing on one thing. Single that task. That's just yep. a suggestion. You should talk to Janil D because I think she's also doing that Deepak Chopra workshop that you Wonderful. mentioned. So that's interesting. All right, thanks Wonderful. D. My pleasure. We had one more guest we didn't get to speak to. If, if Asme, and again, I hope I'm saying this correctly. If you're there, Asme from Morocco, we'd love to say hello to someone so far away on the other side of the world. She may not be able to, but I just wanted to give Hello. that shout out. So again, oh, do we have you, Asne? Oh, yes. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm well. Can you tell us where you're calling from and how you heard about this meeting? I'm calling from Morocco, and I heard about this meeting on Eventbrite. Oh, wonderful. Yes, we are on Eventbrite. Where in Morocco are you calling from? From the north. From the north and do you attend a toastmasters meeting there or have you ever been to a toastmasters meeting before no i have never been a uh, toastmasters before and this is my first time here in this meeting and i'm glad to see all your faces and i enjoyed every speech and table topics and how organized is this meeting it's really incredible thank you Oh, thank you so much. That's so kind of you to say. We hope you come back. We'd love to hear some stories from you. We've really enjoyed inviting and uh, welcoming people from around the world. So we'd love to hear some stories from you next time. Please come again. Absolutely. I would love to. Thank you. Thank you, Asme. 
Well, that's so cool. As we've said before, one of the great benefits of doing this online is we've been able to welcome people from from Africa, from Australia, from Bermuda, from the Bahamas, all over the world. So it's really exciting for us to be able to hear some different voices and invite some new stories into the space. And with that, Henry, I think we're pretty well set to wrap up and move into after hours. Thank you for that, Kaylee. Um, and yes, so anybody that's interested in membership, please stick around. I did want to say one last thing before we let you guys go and ask you to come back next week is um, see that handsome fellow there in the gift channel. That's, that's a gift that I made on um, a website that we're going to ask you all to participate in. So I think the next level of this is getting you guys to make gifts of yourself. We're calling them emojis. And this is the way that you'll be able to then give feedback to the audience. And so um, I need people to volunteer, if you would. And if you're interested in volunteering for um, that part of the exercise for us, stick around for after hours so that we can show you how to make uh, your own emojis. And that way we can get some immediate feedback to our speakers from people who are actually in the audience. So that's another fun thing we want to do. Um, with that being said, uh, we'll turn it over to after hours. Anybody's got any questions about the uh, membership and the show, please stick around. Grab your favorite cocktail, as I always like to say, and uh, come meet everybody from the show and the other members. It's also a way for us to get to know each other in a less formal atmosphere. With that said, we'll wrap up the show and see you in after hours. <laughs>